Inexperience, power, unpreparedness, all are factors which cause motorcycle accidents and contribute to an awful and unnecessary waste which need not happen. I had the experience of seeing a one day old machine capable of about 130 mile an hour, an absolute wreck. Uh, the rider had owned it for one day, 24 hours, and uh, through just inexperience, he had uh, killed, he was killed. Uh, the, uh, he, he had just happened to uh, handle it wrongly on a bend which happened to get a little tighter and he was in the wrong gear. Let us start at the beginning. What is a motorcycle? Basically, a motorcycle is made up of two wheels, a strengthened frame with shock absorbers built into the frame, an electrical system, a fuel system, a gearing system, and an internal combustion engine. Motorcycle engines are either four-stroke or two-stroke. The four-stroke engine is more suitable for road bikes where engine braking and economy are most important. This engine has four deliberate strokes of the piston to complete one cycle in its operation. The first downward movement sucks fuel mixture into the combustion chamber. The second movement, upward, compresses the mixture. The spark plug then ignites the mixture which expands and forces the piston rapidly downward for the power stroke. And the fourth movement forces the burnt gases into the exhaust system. A two-stroke engine has only two movements to each cycle in its operation. With the two-stroke engine, the crankcase is airtight. The piston movement uncovers ports in the cylinder wall to admit the fuel mixture and to expel exhaust gases. This allows one power stroke in every two movements of the piston. There are many reasons why people buy or want to ride different types of motorcycles. Economy. If I could ride one, I'd buy one myself, it's cheaper. Speed and mobility. In the train, it used to take me about an hour and a half to get here. On the bike, it takes me 18 minutes. Parking. That's great, you know, it saves parking, doesn't it? For sporting activities. It's mainly scrambling I like, I think, more than anything. Because of these reasons, and because of the numerous makes and models on the market, there are many factors to consider when selecting a motorcycle. How much do you want to pay? What kind of riding are you going to do? To and from work? Touring? Or trail riding? What kind of motorcycle can you handle and control? And remember, this depends on your size, strength, and experience. Choosing a bike can be difficult. There are so many available. There are at least 101 models available from the four major Japanese brands. Uh, on top of that, you've got about 100 models from, from the other brands that are available. So you've got something like 200 models to choose from. All bikes are good. I've found this in, in a couple of years of testing. That there's no such thing as a bad bike being made these days. They, they're all good for their intended market. Each make and model has slightly different features and characteristics. However, remember when choosing your bike, select from established brand names and get the opinions of experienced cyclists on the advantages and disadvantages of the various makes, types and sizes on the market. As a general guide, Novice riders would best be suited by lightweight bikes of up to 250 cc's, with 350 cc's the upper limit necessary for general metropolitan riding. If you intend to do a lot of touring, then the heavier bikes of 400 cc's and above are called for. Remember, however, that the bigger and heavier the bike, the more ability and skill are required to ride safely.
the big machines today are too big and heavy for uh, uh, a young person until he's got a couple of years behind him at least. I'm still learning after 30 years. I still have my slides uh, and I try, I try to be as careful a rider as I can. Don't get anything too big for yourself. Just start off something small like 250 Honda, 350 Honda, nothing any bigger than that for someone beginning off. Otherwise the weight, you know, especially if you run around town, the weight gets all these sort of thing. Starting on a 250, it has many advantages. Firstly, knowing the bike. Secondly, being able to handle it. Uh, being able to touch the ground, um, being able to put it on a centre stand, and just generally it's fast enough for a beginner. Most machines are sort of high revving these days and uh, you don't need high capacity to, you know, travel at the sort of speed limits that, uh, that are set in the city area anyway. Uh, it's also easier to manipulate into a parking lot. You'll find people struggling with big bikes here. It's no good buying a trail bike if you're travelling 50 or 60 miles to work each day. You want a street bike. A 350cc is a very capable bike and a very suitable bike for city driving. It can probably compete quite easily with, say, a 750 Honda around town. Well, you could travel on a little bike as long as you're prepared to take it easy. I prefer something this big, you know. I've been riding a fair while now. It must always be remembered that a motorcycle that is good for one type of motorcycling pleasure is often totally unsuitable for other areas. For example, trail bikes are designed to produce more power at lower speeds. This helps the cycle climb hills. They're strictly off-road bikes, as they're not built to perform efficiently in city or highway traffic. The tires don't grip a paved surface well and have little traction on a wet surface. If you go trail riding and that, you're always falling off and breaking a few things, you know, and you go through tra chains and tires and that just as quick. I think there'd be a bit more cost in a trail bike than there is in a really big bike. Regardless of how the machine is used, its size, its engine bore, etc., the motorcycle must be subject to regular and thorough mechanical checks for continued safe riding. Nuts and bolts. 